Hi everyone, I hope you're all well. So over the past year, calls to defund the police in the USA have ridden to fever pitch. And where it was once a niche activist talking point, it was adopted into mainstream cultural dialogue after the death of George Floyd in 2020. Now, one of the arguments for defunding or abolishing the police is that you'd replace a chunk of the force with social workers and psychologists in an, e in an effort to de-escalate violent situations rather than meet them with further violence and then invest any money you save into social programs or education. Because of this idealistic reasoning, the rhetoric took hold last year and led to months of violent riots, injuries and deaths at the hands of Antifa and Black Lives Matter thugs. However, in some cases, it also led to an actual defunding of the police in a few key Democrat-controlled areas, namely Portland, New York City, Austin and Minneapolis. Dave Rubin, the very excellent and based commentator, discussed this recently and what the consequences have been. Here's what he had to say. In August, Austin City Council unanimously voted to cut roughly one third of the city's 434 million police budget. Aggravated assault reports were up 26% from 415 reported year to date in 2020 compared to 524 so far this year. Uh, in December, the Minneapolis City Council unanimously approved a budget that shifted approximately 8 million from the police department towards violent violence prevention and other programs. Between December 11th, 2020 and March 28th of this year, murders in the city rose 46%. In Portland, another bastion of progressive utopia, city commissioners voted in mid-June to cut nearly 16 million from the police budget. The most recent data available show homicides skyrocketed 270% compared to the same time last year. The New York City Council voted in July to move one billion away, one billion away from the New York Police Department's budget. Murders in New York City are up basically 12% year to date as of March 21st. The number of shootings rose 40% in 2021. However, despite this rather clear evidence that defunding the police appears to lead to more crime, not less, the cries of defunding or abolishing policing persist. And even Derek Chauvin being found guilty on all three charges, which activists have made very clear was the only verdict that they would accept, the anti-cop sentiment shows no signs of receding anytime soon. So. Given the pervasive nature of this lack of support for police, it's no wonder that cops across America have been resigning by the truckload, leaving many police departments under-resourced and understaffed. And it got me thinking. Considering the anti-cop sentiment and the pressure to defund police departments that in many cases is actually bearing fruit, what would happen in the USA if all the cops finally threw up their hands and quit? whether out of necessity because of the shrinking budgets of their various departments or in protest because of their shonky treatment at the hands of progressive politicians. Which brings me to the substance of this video. For your viewing pleasure and as part of my Darkest Timeline series, I have imagined the worst possible scenario if the anti-police movement is followed to its logical conclusion. But before I tell you what that is, this video is sponsored by Slug.com. But when I say sponsored by, I mean I have to use that terminology because YouTube will get me into trouble if I do not. Really, what I'm saying is that I am on a new pro-free speech platform called Slug. I would love for you all to join me there and become a member of my group. Slug is a discussion platform outside of big tech, which is very important of course, and as well as me, it features a number of the content creators that you know and enjoy. And considering the uh, behavior of big tech over the past several months, it's very important that we support these alternative platforms. I have put the link to slug.com in the video description. Please click on it and join me there. I would love to have you. Anyway, as I was saying, here is Tales from the Darkest Timeline, A Nation Without Cops. Just so you know, Jeff, you were not creating six different timelines. Of course I am, Abed. <laughs> In 2021, when the guilty verdict and the trial of Derek Chauvin was announced, it was thought by many that that would finally placate the race-baiting activists who had burned and looted their way through America's cities. 
after all. Their number one claim was that the American police force and, in fact, all of America's institutions were systemically racist. Therefore, a white cop being found guilty of the murder of a black man would at least appease the activists somewhat, was the thinking. Ease their apparent anxieties about systemic racism and a supposed lack of accountability from cops and perhaps lessen the vehemence with which they were going after police no such luck. See, the anarchist left-wing mob are never happy. Each time you think they've been handed a victory, they just shift the goalpost slightly to create a new problem. And that's exactly what they did with what would eventually come to be called the Police Displacement Movement, or PDM. The PDM manifesto was written by Black Lives Matter ideologues and adopted by Democratic politicians, first at a local and state level and soon after by the federal government. Effectively, the PDM was legislation designed to literally displace the police force, to not only leech their funding to historically low levels, but to live out the Black Lives Matter dream of replacing significant portions of the force with social workers and psychologists who would theoretically counsel and de-escalate violent perpetrators in an effort to stop police shooting to kill. These shrinks and social workers would not be armed while on the job, even in dangerous situations, both in an effort to make perpetrators feel under less pressure, so to speak, but also to save money on equipment and ammunition, since, as I mentioned, police budgets were being slashed to ribbons. And on top of that, again, thanks to these slashed budgets and continued efforts by the Democrats to restrict the use and ownership of firearms, the USA adopted a system similar to the Brits in which only specific units of police are armed with guns, while the rest of them are armed with, well, sticks. When the Bowman bears his steel. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. So by the year 2023, your average response to an armed break and enter was a shrink, a social worker, three or four cops armed with batons, and maybe one with a gun. But hey, Black Lives Matter said all it would take to reduce violence was to de-escalate the perpetrators with counselling and kind words. What could possibly go wrong? Anyway, perhaps this was all a good idea in theory, at least in the wildest fantasies of wannabe Marxist activists and their whiny critical race theory friends, but in practice it proved problematic. See, funnily enough, a violent criminal who is in the middle of, say, robbing a family home while holding its residents hostage at gunpoint is not going to be deterred by some uh, university graduate with a clipboard and a flashlight saying, come on buddy, why don't we talk this through? Which really should have been obvious to even the stupidest among us, given the spike in crime we saw in 2020 with the defunding of police departments in New York City, Portland, Atlanta and Minneapolis. Also, duh. Anyway, this gross, willful lack of judgment by the PDM led not only to an ascendancy of violent crime, the likes of which had never been seen not just in America, but in most other countries, but also to a massive spike in deaths of those in the police force. Not of armed cops, but of the unarmed shrinks and social workers who were brought in to de-escalate the very situations that ended up killing them. Because, again, Funnily enough, criminals armed with illegal firearms took one look at those gentle souls with their smiling faces and distinct lack of weaponry, coupled with the lack of backup since most cops were now armed with sticks and went, bang bang, you're dead. But who got the blame for this increase in on-the-job casualties? Not the politicians or the activists or the PDM. The cops got the blame for not adequately protecting the shrinks with their sticks and like one gun between five cops, which made it very hard to defend against gangs of armed thugs or drug kingpins and their lackeys or just your old fashioned mass shooters. So needless to say, the PDM did not last long. Despite the insistence of the Democrats that it was the only way to real change, it proved totally unsus unsustainable. Coupled with the increase in violent crime and the tragic deaths of the shrinks and the social workers came an acceleration in cops quitting the force or retiring early. And given the oppressive nature of the PDM and the general cultural hatred of the police that still permeated popular culture, there simply were not enough recruits signing up to replace the cops. As such, two things occurred. The first was that about eight months or so after the PDM was established nationally, the police force simply collapsed, at least in the states like California that had really leaned into the PDM rather than those like Texas who had resisted it to the nth degree. 
One freezing cold morning in February 2023, cops just went on strike. They threw down their sticks or guns if they were one of the lucky ones who still had a firearm, said a prayer for those who had fallen at the hands of violent criminals, and said, that's it. You hate us so much, you do it. See how you like not having police around to protect you. The ironic thing was that this nationwide police strike actually didn't make a huge difference, since given the massive funding cuts, disarming of the force, and general tearing down of morale, America had effectively become a lawless society in everything but name. They had been without an effective police force for nearly a year, and in that time, along with an expected increase in murder, theft and assault, the drug trade had skyrocketed, with drug lords earning immense amounts of wealth off other people's pain, while making the opioid crisis so bad that the average American's life expectancy dropped a full five years between censuses. And don't even get me started on illegal immigration and human trafficking. That is a whole nother darkest timeline video. So, with the valiant remains of America's police force finally saying enough, the country could officially be classed as having regressed to what it was in the anarcho-tyrannous days of the Wild West. Gang violence became so bad that a generation of young, mostly black men were in danger of being wiped out by gun violence, and nobody was doing anything to stop it. There was nobody who could. The military was split between deployment in the Middle East, since Joe Biden had not, of course, withdrawn the troops. He had just said he was going to, while sending over more and more and more, as he has always done. And the rest of the military was stationed on Capitol Hill to protect the federal buildings, which had turned into a sort of Big Brother house for politicians and their staff. They'd had no choice but to make that happen, since Antifa had become so emboldened by the lack of policing and of course all that lovely media coverage they received, that they'd captured the streets of DC and were throwing acid at any politician who tried to leave Capitol Hill, Democrat included. It was a very, very rude shock for the Democrats when they realized that the little anarchist thugs they'd been pandering to all this time waved a metaphorical guillotine at them the moment they felt that they could get away with it 100%. So, while the rest of America had been going to hell since the initiation of the PDM in terms of violent crime, while the police force was being pipped off one by one by criminals with far better weaponry than cops, the politicians were perfectly safe. They had nothing to worry about. Anyway, the national police strike could not have come at a worse time, considering Beto O'Rourke was, at the same time, moving his newly minted task force, the Gun Disruption Squad, or GDS, around the country, forcibly buying back people's firearms. By which I mean there was no buying them back, no money was exchanged. Beto was just taking them. They only called it up buyback scheme because politicians know that if you word something in a cheerful way, you can mask its actual meaning and nobody will be brave enough to point it out. Kind of like the Reproductive Health Act and the Affordable Care Act or the Equality Act, you know the drill. Now it was this attempt to fully disarm the populace that caused people to finally snap, which, again, ushered in the Second American Civil War and the glorious secession of the United American States. That is, 25 red states, the patriotic kind of red, not the communist kind, seceded from the union, forming their own union based on individual rights and freedoms, patriotism, and of course, law and order. There can be no prosperity without law and order. This was the best kind of news for all the browbeaten former cops out there who had been driven into the ground by idiotic, spiteful activists with no brains and an axe to grind. Rights and freedoms, patriotism, law and order? It was a cop's dream. And considering the discrimination they had suffered at the hands of Democrats, rhinos and activists, cops in the United American States were granted a special sanctuary residence for themselves and their families if they chose to move there. Along with a guaranteed job in a well-resourced police force, or since the United American States was one of the cleanest, safest, freest nations on earth, early retirement and a generous pension, since with the right to bear arms guaranteed and proper policing ensured, people of all races lived in peace with each other and there was very little crime to fight. As for what was left of the United States of America, with their lack of police, absent military being forced to fight foreign wars or protect crooked politicians, opioid trade, rise in human trafficking and anti mobs running riot, well... You can imagine what that wound up looking like. Mom, can, can you pick me up? I'm scared. So, 
That's what will happen the day that America doesn't have any cops. Let's hope it doesn't get to that, hmm? If you like that video, please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave me a comment. And if you really, really liked it, then check out the video description for my subscribe star link and other ways you can support me.